All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about why a cell would need to copy all of its DNA and how it gets started and some basic information about that process. So first of all, I want you to imagine like here's some here's a cartoon of some skin cells, let's say. And the question up here says, uh, what happens when a cell dies? So let's say, for example, this uh, cell here um, was to die. It would need to be replaced because you have a hole in your skin or something. So basically, a cell adjacent to that cell is gonna have will kind of realize or get the message that its neighbor has died, and so the cell next to it needs to grow bigger and divide into two to fill the gap. I mean, that's kind of the basic idea. In skin, it doesn't happen side by side; it happens from underneath. But you get the idea. Um, a cell, an adjacent cell, needs to get bigger and divide into two to create a new cell to fix the gap. Um, also, it doesn't have to be when a cell dies. It could just be when an organism is growing and getting bigger. So when a cell dies or when you need to create new cells, existing cells have to divide into two. And if a cell is going to divide into two, it, it needs to split everything that it has between the two new cells that it's turning into. And so the cell needs to have two complete sets of its chromosomes, of its DNA. So an individual cell has a set of chromosomes. If it's a human cell, it has 46 chromosomes inside the nucleus of that human cell. Before that cell can divide into two cells, all those 46 chromosomes need to be copied so that when it divides into two cells, this cell gets 46 and this cell gets 46. Because every cell, every human cell, except for egg and sperm, need to have 46 chromosomes to function. So before the existing cell can split itself into two, it's got to copy all of its DNA and make a double set of everything, all the chromosomes. All right, so in this, uh, in this week's uh, topic, we're going to learn how that copying happens. Um, so, and we call it replication. When DNA copies itself, we're saying you're replicating or making a second copy of all the DNA. All right, so this slide here is a very, very basic kind of bio 100 um, idea of, of how DNA replication happens. So up here in the top part of the diagram, we've got some uh, a a, a piece of DNA. We can say this is a, a part of a chromosome. It's you can see it has it's color coded as purple a purple backbone here. Okay, and it's calling it parental DNA. We're just using the terms parental because that's the starting where we start with. All right, and if you look further down on the diagram, down in this part of it, you can see how the parental DNA has been opened apart, separated, the two strands have been pulled apart from each other, and then a new piece of DNA has been built to line up with the left side and then also to line up with the right side. So if you look really carefully at the colors of the backbones of these molecules, the purple one, the original old DNA is going like this, you can see my black line, and the other side of the old DNA is going like that. So that's the original DNA. And then a new piece of DNA has been built to line up with each side. So there's that piece there and that piece there. All right. And if we look at the very bottom of the diagram down here and down here, you can see that there are now two double helixes when there were originally only one. So we've taken one, we've pulled it apart. We haven't gotten rid of it but we've just used this old piece to make a copy of the new piece attached to it and this old piece to make a copy of, to make a new piece attached to that. Um, and this is how DNA replication basically works. The old or the existing DNA serves as a template or a guide for how to build the new DNA because if there's a G on, the, on this side of the old one, then you need to have a C on this side of the new one. There's a T, which you can see right here. We're going to build an A. So you can patch in the side that's missing by lining up the bases using the base pairing rules of G pairing to C and A pairing to T. 
So this idea of the DNA opening up and then new pieces being made to line up up the middle is um, basically what happens. Uh, however, it, there are some complications to get this accomplished. All right, so there's a couple things to know when you um, learn about DNA replication. The first thing is you have to remember the ends of the strands of the DNA. So if you remember DNA has a directionality, it has what's called a five prime end and a three prime end, just like the English language where we start sentences with capital letters and we end sentences with periods and that distinguishes the beginning to the end. DNA has something sort of similar where the the ends of the molecule aren't interchangeable. One, one end is different from another. One's like a capital letter, one's like a period. So, um, and we've covered this already in some previous videos, but you need to be able to identify which end is five and which end is three. And you do that by looking at what functional group is at the end. So if we follow on this left strand here on the diagram, up here we have a phosphate group. Phosphate group is attached to the five carbon. So this up here is our five prime end. And if we follow down here, there's an OH down here. The three prime end always has an OH. So on this strand on the left side, the five is at the top and the three is at the bottom. On the strand on the right side of this diagram, here's a phosphate group down here that's always attached to the five carbon. So that's our five prime end. And up here, the hydroxyl, that's our three prime end. And you probably remember that DNA is anti-parallel. So if one side goes five to three in this direction, the other side has to go five to three in the opposite direction. So they always run counter to each other like this. So being able to identify the three and the five prime ends of a piece of DNA is really important for when you really dig into how DNA replication occurs. And that is because um, when we build DNA, when we wanna make a piece of DNA in our cells, we wanna fill in that strand that's missing, the enzyme that does that job can only work in one direction. And that direction is, it can only add on to a three prime end. All right, so this is one of the most important things to remember from this section of the course is that if you want to extend a piece of DNA or build a piece of DNA, the only end that you can make it longer from is the three prime end. So it's like in a sentence, you start with a capital letter and you write it, write it, write it, and you can keep adding words to make the sentence go longer, 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 but you always add on to the end of the sentence before you put the period at the end. You don't really write the sentence the other way, all right, starting from the period, the capital letter and backwards. That's not how we do English writing, I guess. <laughs> um, so it's also not how we do DNA synthesis. When we do DNA synthesis, you can only add on from the three prime end. And that's what this um, slide here is trying to show you. If we look at this diagram here, all right, here's a piece of DNA on the left. And up here, look, there's the phosphate. So that's the five prime end. And down here, here's my hydroxyl. So that's my three prime end. And if you look where we're adding on, we're adding on our new nucleotide onto this end. This is where we're gonna add on to. So this uh, piece on the left is getting longer in this direction, all right? If we wanted to make this strand on the right longer, we could, but we couldn't make it longer here. We couldn't add nucleotide, nucleotide. We couldn't do that because this is a five prime end. So this is like a dead end. We can't extend it. We can add nucleotides here if we want. We can add them up here if we want. So we can extend this end in this direction because we've got a three prime OH right here. So this piece can get bigger that way and this piece can get bigger that way. All right, now that causes some issues, um, but we'll address those in a, a later video. But being able to identify those three and five prime ends is gonna be really important to help you figure out the process of DNA replication uh, in, a, in the next couple of videos. Here's another slide that kind of shows that one more time, maybe a little more clearly. This time the template 
is on the right. It's this dark blue. Here's the sugar phosphate backbone. And here is the nucleotides sticking off, right? And we're building the new strand, which is the pale blue here. And here we've got an A on our template. So we're going to have to put a T here. And we can build on here because here's our three prime end. So we're building this piece in this direction. We're going to stick this one on here. And then the next nucleotide would come in right here and it would have a G and we'd uh, attach it right here. Right? But we're building in this, in this direction. All right. You can see here, we've added the base here, ready for the next base to come in here. And we're building, this is getting longer and longer and longer. Right, so you can, we're not building up here. We're not going this way. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. In the next video, we'll address some more of uh, the complexities of DNA replication.